Hello students and welcome to Lecture Notes on Mesopotamia. On our previous unit we talked about the Neolithic and Paleolithic periods and this is our first civilization. As a reminder, last time we discussed a few things that makes a civilization and how civilization as a concept can be problematic. Historians have disagreed on what defines civilizations, but many of them use the same criteria when looking at groups to determine if they are a civilization. Uh, as a reminder, some of these are urban settlements. In order to be a civilization, people have to have urban areas or cities that they can live in. Uh, though many of them still live in farms, they do need to have a city to be considered a civilization. Additionally, there is divisions of labor, and that labor is specialized. So it's not like when we talked about the Paleolithic and Neolithic periods where many people were hunters and gatherers. In a civilization, there are different jobs that people can have other than just growing food. And so these jobs will help meet the needs of the economic, political, social, and religious parts of society. The third aspect is a system of writing. Up until this point, there has not been a system of writing. Information was just handed down verbally. Uh, but when we start talking about Mesopotamia, we see that there is a form of writing that can be used to keep records. The fourth aspect is art. And this is more than just decorations, but there needs to be art that can represent people and their activities. And finally, civilizations need infrastructure and administration. People rely on governments to help them build roads, to bring water to cities, to protect their citizens. And so government and infrastructure is a key aspect of what makes a civilization a civilization. This region of the world has many different names. One of the names is the Fertile Crescent. That's because the area is shaped somewhat in a crescent and it stretches from the Persian Gulf all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. Neolithic farmers first began settling in the Fertile Crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers around 6000 BCE. The word Mesopotamia comes from the Greek words that mean between two rivers. Early settlers who settled between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers found that it was very good for irrigation of crops because the area often had very little rainfall. Thanks to the system of irrigation, civilizations began to form around 3200 BCE in an area known as Babylonia. Babylonia was divided into two regions. There was Sumer in the south, near the delta of the rivers and the Persian Gulf, and then there was Akkad in the north. And these two areas became very important in early Mesopotamian civilizations. Geography played a very important role in the civilizations in Mesopotamia. While the area between the two rivers brought plenty of irrigation, severe spring and summer storms often resulted in uncontrollable floods. The floods had benefits because flooding waters brought large deposits of silt, which made the soil very good for growing crops. This fertile soil led to surpluses in food production. However, at the same time, flooding could wash away crops or villages. The other downside for the geography of the region was that the civilizations that formed were exposed on all sides to invasion. There weren't natural barriers such as mountains uh, or large deserts that helped keep people away. In addition, there was very little rainfall in the region, and that required civilizations to build large canals that would bring water from the Tigris or Euphrates River further inland so they could be used for farming. Finally, there were many resources that weren't available to the civilizations in this region. There weren't very large deposits of stone or metal, and there was very little timber. These materials would have to be imported from other nearby civilizations. And as a result, many people settling in the region had to work together if they were going to survive. Throughout the history of Mesopotamia, there were a number of different civilizations that formed. The first were the Sumerians, who formed around 3200 BCE. By 3200 BCE, these cities in the Sumer region had all the characteristics of civilizations that we talked about earlier. One of the most important parts of Sumerian civilization was the development of writing. Writing first began as pictographs, pictures of stars or sheep or a person's face, but they eventually evolved into symbols. 
The writing in this area was called cuneiform. Uh, cuneiform comes from the Latin word cunis, which means wedge-shaped. And this writing was a series of wedge symbols uh, that were used to create their writing system. It spread throughout the region and was used in Babylon, the Assyrians, the Hittites, and the Persians. Although the Sumerians invented the very first forms of writing, most of the people who lived in Sumeria were not able to read or write. Instead, they used scribes. Scribes were individuals who went to school to learn how to write and read cuneiform. These scribes kept the records of the civilization. Many of the city-states in Sumeria competed over resources, especially water, and they often fought to control more territory and thus control more resources. As a result, cities were protected by very large walls, and the city-states fought against each other in wars in an effort to secure the resources that they needed. Sumerian religions became the basis for many of the other religions that would come later within the Mesopotamian region. Uh, Sumerians believed in many gods, which is called polytheism. And they believed these gods had the power over nature and that they could guide people. Each city-state in the Sumerian area had a patron god. And many cities had a ziggurat or a temple to that god. City-states were a theocracy, which means they were ruled by a high priest of the city who was considered to be the representative of the patron god of that city. Priests and officials were thought to be the highest level of society. However, eventually these priests began to take more power and more land, and this led to the rise of strong rulers, also known as despots. The Sumerians believed that the temples and the lands were the gods' estate on earth, and they believed that the gods actually lived in the temples and ziggurats that they built for them. Oftentimes, these Sumerian gods were considered to be unpredictable. The unpredictable nature of the flooding of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers can be explained in this belief that the gods were unpredictable to also. Sumerian society was divided into different social classes. The highest social classes had the priests, the later kings, warriors, and officials within the government. The next class included merchants, farmers, fishers, and artisans. The lowest class was slaves and criminals. Slavery was a major part of Sumerian society. In some cities, the slave population was between 40 and 50 percent of the entire city's population. And slaves had many different jobs. They worked on farms. They worked as servants. Some worked in temples. Others had city jobs or bureaucratic jobs. Slavery in Sumeria is different than we often think about it here in the United States. Slaves did have rights, and slavery was not based on race or culture. Slaves became slaves through conquest, so when a city-state was defeated, the citizens of that city-state may become slaves, or slaves became slaves through debt. In Sumerian society, men and women had different roles, and men were given greater economic and legal control than their wives. For example, men were the only ones who could file for divorce. In society, children also were controlled by their parents until the ages of 20 or 21. The Akkadians came to power around 2300 BCE, and their first ruler was Sargon I. Sargon comes from a lower class. He was proud of his humble origins, and he often said that he was working for those lower classes. In the story of where he came from, he claims that his mother, who was unmarried, had to abandon him. And so she placed him in a reed basket and floated him down the Euphrates River. He was found and rescued by a gardener. This foundation myth may be familiar to many people, as it's been used in other religions around the world. Sargon rose to power through the army. He said that he was looking after the lower classes, but he also aided merchant classes. Eventually, he was able to conquer Sumer, and he created the world's first empire. Sargon's empire stretched from the Persian Gulf to nearly the Mediterranean Sea, and the influence of the Akkadians went even beyond those borders. However, following his death, the rulers that came after him were unable to stop invading armies, and the Akkadian 
Empire collapsed in 2150 BCE. By 2000 BCE, a new empire had formed, the Babylonians. The civilization was controlled from the city of Babylon, and its most well-known ruler was Hammurabi. Hammurabi is best known for a set of over 300 laws known as Hammurabi's Code, though many of these laws have their basis in Sumerian history. Hammurabi's Code is also known for its use of corporal punishment. Those found guilty under Hammurabi's Code may have their hand or tongue or ear removed. This is where the phrase an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth comes from. The Babylonians also made advances in geometry and algebra. For example, they had figured out that the square of the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. This would later be discovered by the Greek philosopher Pythagoras. The Babylonians also used a counting system based on units of 60. This is where our hour that is 60 minutes and our minute that is 60 seconds and our circle that is 360 degrees comes from. Eventually, the Babylonians would be invaded by the Hittites. After the fall of Babylon, the next 500 years in Mesopotamia would be marked by disunity and disorder. Over the 500 years following the Babylonians, a period of small states emerged until around 900 BCE when the Assyrians started consolidating power. The Assyrians had a very strong army. Like the Hittites, they used chariots, but they also used mounted cavalry and weapons of siege so that they could attack and take over cities with defensive walls. Once the Assyrians had captured a city, they terrified the defeated people. They would do things like deport people in mass to try and destroy the unity of the civilization that was there before them. The areas they conquered became provinces with a local governor. These governors had a lot of jobs controlling the area for the Assyrian Empire, but their biggest job was to pay tribute to the Assyrian Empire and to provide soldiers for the army. The oppressive rule of the Assyrians eventually led to revolts. Areas stopped paying tribute. And a group known as the Chaldeans, with other allies, eventually destroyed the capital city of Nineveh and formed a new Chaldean Empire. The Chaldean Empire is sometimes known as the New Babylonian Empire because its capital was in Babylon. The empire began in 627 BCE when the king Nebopolassar led a revolt against the Assyrians. Following his death, his son Nebuchadnezzar helped rebuild the city of Babylon. He built tremendously large walls, walls so wide that they had rows of small houses on tops. He built beautiful architecture, such as the Ishtar Gate, which included beautiful animal tiles uh, and is one of the best examples of Babylonian architecture. He also built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which were known as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world by Greek historians. The city became one of the largest and richest cities in the world. A Greek historian said, In magnificence, there is no other city that approaches it. This new Babylonian empire was able to gain control of nearly all of the land that the Assyrians once ruled. However, following the death of Nebuchadnezzar, the kings became weak. And in 539 BCE, the Persians were able to take advantage of these weak rulers and took control of Mesopotamia. Thank you for listening to this lecture on Mesopotamia, the first civilizations. If you'd like to find out more about the different civilizations that lived in Mesopotamia or their leaders, check out the Ancient History Encyclopedia at www.ancient.eu.